looking to really get into the word and change your perspective on how you live, this is definitely a book to consider. Hey yo, I'm Indigo and I just finished reading The Pursuit of Holiness by Jerry Bridges. This is one of 24 books that are listed on the Bible Speak website as books every Christian should read. The results thus far have been meh, but that's all gonna change for us today. This book is absolutely incredible. Let me break it down for you. Of course, this book is about the holiness of God, what it means to be holy, and how we as Christians are responsible for turning away from sin and pursuing a holy life. This book has a study guide at the very end I forgot about while I was reading, so sorry about that. I took my own notes, but I did look through the guide and it was quite helpful. If you choose to read this book, I would recommend following along in the study guide. Anyway, even though this book was originally published in the 70s, the message is absolutely relevant, probably now even more than back then. This author is a no-nonsense writer. He certainly does not sugarcoat the truths he explains and gives a lot of scriptural evidence to back his claims. In essence, God is absolutely, relentlessly holy, and he does not tolerate any sin. Whatever sin is in you is covered by the events at Calvary and it will be destroyed. However, it is your responsibility to live a holy life. By God's grace and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you will be given provision to do things like flee from temptation and renew your mind, but God will not do that for you. Mr. Bridges says time and time again that the true, genuine Christian life is not for everyone and it is difficult. I think a quote from this text will really drive home the main message of the book. He said, The path of obedience in the pursuit of holiness is often contrary to human reason. If we do not have the conviction in the necessity of obeying the revealed will of God, as well as the confidence in the promises of God, we will never persevere in this difficult pursuit. We have no excuse to be struggling with sin, if I had to really put it in perspective. We are dead to our old life and alive in Christ. The sanctification process is just slowly destroying our flesh or carnal nature. So that's not necessarily only about the physical bodies our souls occupy. There's just this sense that the author is calling us to take God's holiness seriously. I believe that this is one of the major issues we face today in the church. We have a dull sense of what it means to be holy. We live so much by the world's standards and how we talk, what media we consume, and the things we would rather take pleasure in than to pursue God. It's no wonder that our idea of holiness is that only God's elite Christians can participate. With this in mind, I think every Christian should definitely read this book, but I would not recommend this book to a casual Christian. This may sound really harsh, but a casual Christian is not the kind of person who's going to put forth the effort to pursue holiness. Though it is required of us, and I'm not exactly sure how God will deal with those of us who are casual in the faith, this type of person says yes to Jesus, but lives his or her life in his or her own way. I would recommend this book to someone who's looking for more out of their walk with Christ. Someone who is hungry for more than just Sunday sermons and Wednesday group meetings. I also think it's for someone who is discovering the major issues with the modern Western church and its prosperity gospel, who desires to know God and revere his name appropriately. If you are the one who wants to honor God with your life, then this is the book for you. That's it for my review. It's time to pick a new book. I'm not gonna open it yet, hold on. Okay. And the book is 24. So that's the last book, right? One, two, three, four.
So it is book 24, and that is Morning and Evening by Charles H. Spurgeon. Make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss any more of these videos, and thank you so very much for watching.